All right, welcome back in Powers on Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jason, down here in Tampa. Now we are going to talk a little Florida State football. Spring football is right around the corner this weekend up in Tallahassee. A lot of the programs around the country are having their spring game this weekend, and Florida State is one of them, and no better person to talk to than with Matt. Matt is with the Orlando Sentinel. He covers Florida State, a little Orlando Magic, a little Central Florida, a wide range of things that Matt can talk about. So welcome back in, Matt. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good. Happy. Hope you had a happy Easter and all that good stuff. You too. I hope so. Now, you a Masters fan at all? Yeah, you know, I've 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 played golf for about the last thirty four years. Unfortunately, it's a frustrating sport. I was on the golf team for a couple of years in high school, or tried to get on the golf team for a couple of years in high school. But uh, you know, it's uh, I enjoy watching those tournaments. I enjoy watching uh, uh, pretty much the the uh, the PGA alone. I'm not been big into the the, the live tournament stuff, but it's right. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's fun to watch those guys compete. Well, you just had Liv right in your backyard last weekend or weekend before the Masters was in Orlando, and Brooks Kepka, a former Florida Stater, won that event. And then obviously we saw what he did in the Masters coming in, you know, kind of running out of steam there at the end. But uh, how how was how how did the Live event? What was the was there any talk or chatter in Orlando about the event? Yeah, there was a little bit. You know, I think you know they had a pretty good crowd show up. Uh, I spoke to a couple of my colleagues who went out to the tournament. Um, and they said, you know, they had a good crowd, you know, obviously, uh, parking was free. Um, you, you know, they, it, it's a different type of golf event, you know, when you think about it, I mean, live is very much, uh, kind of in your face, you know, a brash bold, you know, lots of music being played, yeah. lots of beer being drunk, you know, those kind of things, you know, I think the PGA is, is, is more of a, you know, traditional type of, right. uh, of con- a, a traditional type of, of, of league, you know, where the, where the, the golfers really, you know, don't kind of go through that, but uh, it was a, uh, it seemed to get a lot of people excited. A lot of people, uh, they, they've uh, had support for a lot of the golfers out there. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if they can continue to, to go forward with it. You know, I mean, it's, it, there seems to be kind of a, uh, you know, you either like it or you don't when it comes down to that league. No, no doubt. All right, before we get to Florida State football, I want to get your thoughts on the Orlando magic. Obviously the NBA playoffs are getting going this weekend. What's the state of the Orlando franchise these days? I mean, you obviously they had Paolo Bancaro, number one pick last year, had, seemed to have a pretty good year from Duke. Kind of where is this Orlando Magic franchise at? Well, I think there's a lot of optimism around this franchise. You know, I mean, especially over when you consider what's gone over the last couple of years, you know, they've obviously struggled. Um, they've brought in a lot of young, they've been a young organization. Um, they've, they've really kind of tried to build that, uh, that roster through the draft process and through a little bit of a little bit of free agency, but most of it's been through the draft and they've got success. Obviously pa- Paolo Bancaro is a, was a huge piece of what they were able to do this year. Um, you know, they, they put together some really good stretches. If they had started as, as strong as they'd finished, um, I think they may have had a chance to maybe be in, in, in the playoff mix you know, this year, but um, that unfortunately didn't happen. They had injuries they had to deal with. Mar- Mar- Markel Fultz obviously was out for the first part, you know, early on in the season, uh, Jonathan Isaac came back, but then was hurt again. Um, you know, really, this is a franchise. I've never seen a franchise really go through as much injury uh, situations as this one has done. But um, I think there's a lot of optimism moving forward. I think they feel like, you know, again, they're going to go. They've got the pieces now. They feel like they can make a solid run. The chemistry seems to be right. They may add a piece here or there, but I don't think they'll be a major player when it comes to free agents. Yeah, it's, like, it's always, just, I mean, you know, they've just really struggled. It seems like the last eight or 10 years of just having a consistency of, like you said, having the same group of guys play together for a couple of years together to try to get, and they've shown, like you said, they've shown some stretches of really good play and, and uh, hopefully they can get that uh, situation. Cause again, it's just good for the area and good for the city and good for the league for Orlando to be, to be, to be in the mix a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's get to your Florida State football beat. The, the Seminoles coming into spring football, you know, wrapping up this weekend. Give the audience a little sense of, of kind of the last three or four months of Florida State football and kind of comings and goings. I know there's been a couple guys that have left. A couple guys have stayed. A couple guys that we weren't sure were going to stay and ended up, ended up deciding to come back. Talk about the uh, just the evolution of the roster the last three or four months. Yeah, you know, it's 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 been a, a pretty good time for to be Mike Norvell. You know, when you think about it, uh, you know, they they return uh, one of the more experienced rosters in college football this next year. Uh, you know, I think what, what I, ESPN did a little breakdown, and I think Florida State is the most experienced 
uh, has the most experience coming back, you know, with 87% of it, of its, of its production, you know, and you got Jordan, it all starts with Jordan Travis, at quarterback. Right. you know, he's going to be back. He was a huge piece of what they wanted to do. They bring back their top running back and Trey Benson, their top wide receiver and, and, and Johnny Wilson, you know, the offensive line is going to have four starters back now, you know, I mean, uh, they lose Dylan Gibbons, obviously, but, um, and, and, you know, but I think they've got pretty good solid pieces there as well on the defensive side. I think the biggest surprise for the last three or four months was Jared verse announcing that he was going to forego going to the NFL draft where he was projected to be a, a top first round pick, which would have meant, you know, 30, $40 million, you know, instead he decided to come back and he wants to, to, to continue to evolve, you know, get his game to the next level. I think that's something that he wants to do at Florida state. They got most of their pieces back on the defensive line. Their linebacking core is very experienced with Tatum Bethune coming back, Kellen Deloach coming back as well. And then their secondary, I think that's the one area where maybe, you know, again, they're going to have some concerns. They lose Jamie Robinson, who's left to go to the, to the NFL, declare early to go to the NFL. So they've got some some pieces there. They brought in some transfers. Uh, and Ventrell Cypress, I think, is a guy they brought in from, from Virginia, who uh, I think will probably be a, a major player when it comes to their secondary as well. Um, so lots of lots of talent back, you know. And, and now what they face is expectations. You know, right. they're going to go into this not upcoming season probably being a top 15 pick or top 15 uh, team in the country. Uh, you know, they haven't been that kind of have those kind of expectations over the last five or six years. So now how does this team, how does this program face that? You know, I mean, they've, they've always been the underdog. Now all of a sudden now you're going to be, there's gonna be a lot of people who are going after you. My guess is they'll probably be one of the favorites to win the ACC this year. Sure. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of eyes on this Florida state program for the first time in a while. And so Mike Norvell has talked about how the expectations have been high for a while because he puts the expectations on his own program and they've done a, a good job of handling those. Now, you know, again, we'll see what happens once you start getting a lot of attention and you're, you're going to be featured in a lot of games. And it, does, it starts right away when they take on LSU here in Orlando, you know, on uh, September 4th, right. you know, it's going to be a Sunday night game. It's going to be all eyes will be on it. So they're going to have an opportunity to make an opening statement. And if they can make a good one, I, I think it says it spells good things for this program. With the freshmen that they brought in, I don't know how many of those kids reported in January. Are there any of those freshmen that that that, that are making any kind of impact in spring football at all? Yeah, you know, I, I think they've they've all kind of had their moments. You know, I mean, I think Mike Norvell does a good job of kind of not putting too much too much onus on them. You know, to, to make sure I know that they're 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 looking at you know Hakeem Williams obviously was their top their top uh, signee of this class. He's looked really he's looked good so far in practice. Um, we haven't had an opportunity really yet. So at least, you know, what I've seen that to really kind of speak, sit down and speak with them about it. Um, you know, they brought in some pieces on the offensive line. They feel like we're going to help them not maybe so much this year, but the next couple of years, uh, you know, it was a good recruiting class. And they, and they just feel like at this point, these are guys who are really going to be able to step up and, and help them make some plays uh, right now what they're really high on. They're high on the transfers and they're high on the, some of the guys who came back, you know, who were freshmen last year who were coming back for their sophomore years. And that's a good, you know, that to me, that's a great omen for the program is when you don't, when you're not expecting these freshmen to have to come in and be impact players. When you have depth, when you've got some ability to say, hey, it take if it takes them six months to develop or a year to develop physically or, men, you know, emotionally to college, or maybe they're just not quite ready to be elite ACC players yet, that's a great sign for the program. Whereas in years past, they were having to play those freshmen and sophomores maybe a little bit too early. And that's why you saw the lack of production on the field. Yeah, very much so. I mean, one of the things that Mike Norvell and his, and his, co his coaching staff has done since they got there in 2020 was they really had to address the depth issue, you know, the, the depth and the, ta and the lack of talent on this roster. And I think that's something they've done really well. You know, I mean, I think he's gone out and he's recruited well. He's brought in pieces at every position, really, to kind of build that depth. And then he used the transfer portal really well. He brought in some of those transfers that are really were able to step in right away. And they kind of helped bridge that gap between okay, we've got five or six freshman offensive linemen that we feel are going to be good, but now we've got some transfer offensive linemen uh, who can step in here and, and really kind of play now and then allow these freshmen to kind of develop and learn under some of these more experienced players. They didn't have that, you know, a couple of years ago before Norvell got here. It was a lot of young guys just thrown in the mix and they had to kind of get their lumps. But now they can kind of take a deep breath and not have to feel like, let's throw these guys out there. And that's not to say that you won't see a guy like Key Williams out on the field playing a lot. I mean, right. he may get some opportunities as well because he's a five star and he's he's got the talent. But I think they don't have to feel necessary that they have to throw him out there. You know, you've got to be our number one guy. Uh, so I, I think that's the, the big advantage to having the kind of experienced roster they have going in this year. And I think it's going to pay dividends next year when they when a lot of these guys are moving on and they're going to need guys to step up.
Talk about the spring game on Saturday. The last couple questions here with Matt Marshall, Orlando Sentinel. Talk about the spring game Saturday. Give us the time of the game. Is there any? Are they doing any special festivities for the game? Anything surrounding the game that's noteworthy? Uh, they're they're going to kick off at four o'clock. Um, the way Mike Norvell's kind of hinted at it is, I think the first half is going to be a kind of a traditional spring game, you know, with a lot of you know, like a game itself. And I think the second half is going to have more of an interactive fan kind of feel to it. I think they're going to do some things, maybe some drills, do some some situational type things where fans can get a chance to see them doing, you know, maybe like a two minute drill that kind of thing. I, I think, you know, again, I always caution fans when they get excited about spring games that these are really just kind of like exhibitions where yes. they want to kind of let the fans see the team a little bit but don't take much from the actual performances because again it's just they don't want to show you too much there may be some guys like i'm, I'm like I'm, I'm writing for my preview you know i don't think jordan travis is going to see a lot of action i think right. gonna, i think jordan will probably get a few snaps or probably do some things here or there but i think it's much more about showcasing some of the the, the second and third string guys, guys, you maybe you, you, you haven't noticed or, or don't know who's going to be there. Some of the transfers who've come in, you know, I think you're going to see some of that. Um, so like the uh, Haim Abel, who's the, who's the new tight end. I think you're going to see him maybe in different spots to kind of showcase what he's going to be able to do. Uh, so I, I think that's one of the things about these spring games is you just have to take them with a grain of salt. You don't want to get guys hurt and you want to let that you want to have people get a, an opportunity to see the teams and you want to get an opportunity for the players to get their first chance to play in front of a live crowd at Doak. And for some of these guys, they haven't had experience that yet. No doubt. No doubt. All right. I'm sure the game will be on ACC network at some point, whether it's live on Saturday or at some point recorded. So if you can't make it to Tallahassee for the spring game, definitely f- Check out ACC Network, and you probably find somewhere on AC or the Florida State football, Florida State athletic website. I'm sure they will have clips, and obviously, I'm sure the Orlando Sentinel will have clips. Matt will be covering it in depth. So appreciate the time, Matt. Tell everybody where they can find all your great work online with the Orlando Sentinel. Oh, they can go to OrlandoSentinel.com, or they can follow me on Twitter at OS Matt Rochelle. Well, Matt, appreciate the time. Enjoy the spring game this weekend. Thanks for the uh, the updates on the uh, the Magic and the Seminoles, and we will definitely get uh, be in touch as we get closer to fall football. Looking forward to it. All right, Matt, appreciate it. All right, appreciate you joining us on the Powers on Sports podcast, and we will see you next week as we head into the NBA and NHL playoffs and uh, so much more. So have a great week, and we'll see you next time on the Powers on Sports podcast.